Hey there, I'm Stuart Donaldson, martial arts instructor, exercise physiologist, child development authority, and I'm a parent just like you. And today's video is going to cover how does martial arts help kids do better at school. Now, I've been a martial arts instructor for over six years now, and it's my job, my duty here, to give you all the hints, tips, and strategies that I've learned over the last six years teaching hundreds of kids in martial arts and how it's improved their life and the lives of their families. Uh, and I want to pass that on to you uh, so that you can start to incorporate those tips before you even step foot in the training hall. So make sure you subscribe to the channel below. That way you can be notified whenever I've got any new content out, looking at different strategies on confidence, focus, self-control, and all the ways that martial arts helps makes kids better and set them up for success in life. But for today, let's get on with how does martial arts help kids do better at school. Now, unless you're the worst parent in the world, you want to give your child the best start in life and set them up for success, whatever that means for them. You want them to reach their potential. Now that may mean that they get to become a doctor or a rocket scientist, or maybe not, but you want them to become the best they can be. And that starts with schooling. Whatever your opinion is on, on formal education, it's compulsory for at least the first 10 years, uh, so we might as well get the kids used to it. Uh, and the benefit of martial arts is it doesn't need to be, you don't need to be able to read or to write. So it can actually start uh, when the kids are really young. And some programs take kids as young as two or three. Uh, and we've got different opinions on how ready kids are and what they actually take away from it there. And physically, sometimes they're just not ready, but they are definitely mentally ready to start learning some of these important skills that are gonna set them up for success when they do start their formal schooling at age, you know, four, five, six. Now, in no particular order, the number one way that martial arts helps kids get ready for school is by teaching them to sit still. Now, there's a quote from, I'm going to call the new karate kid, which is now over 10 years old at time of recording this, uh, where Mr. Han, Jackie Chan's character, says there is a difference between sitting still and doing nothing. And we don't want kids doing nothing, being totally zoned out. We want them sitting still and focusing on the task at hand. And obviously what we do in martial arts, there is a period of where, where instructions need to be given, whether it's telling the kids uh, you know, what drill they're learning, what kick they're doing, or what block or combination, or even at the end of the class when we play a game. Here's the rules for the game, kids. Uh, so it teaches them they need to be able to sit still and listen, that there's time for sitting, and then there's a time for action. Students clearly aren't gonna be very good at learning if they're off with the fairy, standing up, running around, wriggling and moving when they should be listening. Like I said, there's a time for that. And they are little kids, usually, when they start with us. We don't expect them to sit still for several minutes at a time. Any good martial arts instructor is gonna get them still for a minute or two, get them the information that they need, and then let's get on with the show. And that is quite different to formal schooling where they are gonna be sitting in desks for 10, 20, 30 minutes more uh, at a time. So getting them used to sitting still and that they do need to listen early uh, really helps to set up that mindset for success at school a little bit later on. The second way that martial arts helps kids get ready for school is by teaching them the skill of raising their hand when they wanna speak. If you've ever seen groups of two, three, four-year-olds, it's rabble, rabble, rabble all the time and no one knows what's going on. I have a hard enough time trying to understand when I've got two people talking at me, let alone 10, or in a, you know, a class of 20 or 25. So teaching the etiquette, it's common etiquette to wait your turn uh, and raise your hand when you want to speak, uh, just so as everyone uh, can learn and get the most from, from the education and from the session. I just touched on waiting turns and taking turns there. I'm not going to talk too much about that in today's video, but in Australia, we're very big about calling out line cutters and, and waiting our turn, whether it's at the supermarket or, or elsewhere. And I've traveled the world quite extensively. I've traveled to over 50 countries, and there are some cultures that lining up is just not a thing. And it doesn't matter if you've been there waiting for an hour. If someone wants to cut in front of you, they're going to do that. Uh, and that can be quite grating and quite frustrating for us uh, as Australians. Uh, but not all cultures you know, believe in, in that sort of skill, but if you're gonna be in Australian culture, you're gonna need to know that. Now, in my opinion, there's a right way and a wrong way to teach kids about raising hands. Um, we are very focused in our martial arts school on positive interaction and positive reinforcement rather than negative. So it's not about punishing the kids who do talk out of turn, but about praising and, and you know, raising up the children who do. Um, so if you know, so-and-so is talking, you'll just say, I'm sorry, you know, sorry, sir, I'm sorry, miss, ma'am, whatever you, however you want to address them. Oh, sorry, Jim, you don't have your hand up. I'm just going to go to somebody who does have their hand up. Hey, Jim, you've had your hand up. What would you like to say? 
And that reinforces to that other kid who's talking out of turn that, oh, I will get a turn to talk, but I just need to put my hand up first. And that's really important, again, as they move into their formal schooling, uh, that they learn that skill of being able to, you know, wait, if they have something important to say, to raise their hand. Now, there's another super important skill that is gonna set kids up for success at school, and that is focus. I've talked about that in another video, and I'll chuck the link up on the screen, so check that one out how martial arts helps kids focus and how that relates to school. But for now, let's get on to the third tip, which is listening to the teacher. There's a quote from Larry King, which I thought was really suitable for this segment, and that says, I remind myself every morning that nothing I say will teach me anything. So if I'm going to learn, I must do so by listening. There's also another saying I've heard that people have one mouth and two ears, so that you should spend twice as much time listening as you do talking. Now it's my personal opinion that we should all be lifelong learners, always seeking to improve on the skills we have and generate new skills. And I've actually got a series where I review a lot of self-development and personal development books uh, on how they've helped me out. So if you wanna check out that series with those books, I'll just chuck the video uh, links over here. Our children are in a position to be learners because of their age and their experience. They are very young and they have no experience. So pretty much every adult they come across is going to be you know, a leader or an influence or a teacher of some sort on them. And that can obviously be good and bad. So as adults, whether you know, they're our children or our students, uh, or just you know, uh, maybe extended family or, or friends, we really need to be careful about the things that we do and say, because everything we do is gonna influence them at that age. And we wanna obviously set them up for success. So making sure that those interactions are as positive as possible. Now, in the martial arts, the primary purpose is, is skill acquisition. So whether that's kicks, blocks, strikes, grabs, grapples, rolls, depending on the style, obviously, uh, will depend on what they need to learn. And needing to listen to the teacher or the instructor is, is crucial. Um, if you've got your ears closed, it makes it really, really hard. Now, obviously, if a student is deaf, they're still gonna be able to learn, uh, but they're gonna learn more by observing the skill. But for those of us who have uh, capable hearing, uh, learning is, is the second best way. Uh, I could sit there and, uh, and talk all day, um, but without actually showing, uh, it's not gonna be as successful. So we do have to get into the physical side eventually, but listening to the skill being explained is the first step in skill acquisition. Now at school, obviously, where the knowledge is gonna be talked <laughs> at them or to them a lot more, and it's less physical like it is at martial arts, listening is such a crucial, critical skill. Uh, you know, whether it's learning new words or sentence and structure when they're young, uh, or, or obviously more advanced sentences and, and uh, concepts when they're older. Uh, that is why having students learn that listening to the teacher at such a young age uh, by martial arts training is so important for setting them up for success at school. This is important for adults too, to become active listeners and, and good listeners and, and to be able to listen to a, a, you know, it might not be a teacher necessarily, but a person in authority or who the person is instructing. Because if you're at your job and you need to learn how to do something, you're gonna need to listen to, to learn to get it taught. Now, obviously, if that's a safety critical thing, um, you've got probably your own life and other lives in your hands. Um, so it's really important that you listen to that information. So listening to instructions and listening to a teacher isn't just for kids. So there you go, that's my top three ways plus that little half a bonus tip for the focus on how martial arts helps kids have success at school. Make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting the link below. Have a conversation in the comments. Let me know what you think. Is there other ways you think that martial arts sets kids up for success at school? Have I missed anything major? I'd really like to have a dialogue with you. Um, and like I said, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that when new tips come out on different ways that martial arts helps get kids ready for school and for success in life, that you can stay tuned and we can continue that dialogue. But for now guys, that's it. Take care, much respect.